How's it everyone? Welcome to Open Court. Now I know I'm a little bit late to the party but I finally got to try out the new Yonex E-Zone 98 2022 edition. So let's check it out. So what's new in this 2022 edition of the ESO 98? Well, they added something called 2G NAMD, N-A-M-D, Speed Graphite, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Yonex, you gotta come up with a better name for your technology, no one's gonna remember that. But anyway, I have heard of NAMD technology before, so I'm guessing that 2G stands for second generation, but basically what it is, is supposed to be some kind of reinforcement uh, graphite in the hoop or in the shaft which is supposed to help improve feel and power. I'm assuming that it's something similar to HEADS graphene technology because that was also marketed in a similar way but basically that's what it is. It's graphite that's meant to improve feel and power. The second main difference is that the beam all the way across is actually 0.5 millimeters thicker than the previous generation so it's half a millimeter, half a millimeter, and half a millimeter thick all the way across the board. Now half a millimeter doesn't sound like a lot on paper, but trust me, it does make a difference when you actually hit with this racket. Half a millimeter results in a little bit more power. The thicker the beam, the more power. Also, it's gonna be a little bit stiffer, but Yonex has maintained their VDM, Vibration Dampening Mesh Technology, which is a mesh dampening technology in the handle here which is supposed supposed to help absorb the shock so when you hit the ball the shock that comes from the string bed travels down the throat into the handle the VDM will absorb it here before it goes into your arm and into your elbow also obviously Yonex has maintained their isometric head design so it has this very unique shape it's gotten a little bit rounder in my opinion than previous generations of Yonex rackets where the corners were a little bit more rigid but basically what the isometric uh, technology is supposed to be is that it's supposed to push the sweet spot out wider towards the corners here so that way you get a little bit more rectangular sweet spot as opposed to a traditional oval football shaped sweet spot and that's supposed to help increase power obviously. So full disclosure, I like but I don't love Yonex tennis rackets. I actually do own two Yonex rackets, the V-Core SV98 and the E-Zone DR98, which is a few generations back of this one and is one of the most popular Yonex rackets of all time. But I don't feel confident enough with either of those rackets to take into a tournament or into a sanctioned match. So I was really curious to see if the improved technology feel and the thicker beam on this was going to more suit my game. So let's get onto the court and see how it plays. Alright, I'm here on court with the new Yonex E-Zone 98 2022. Let's see how it plays. Okay, so from the first hit, wow, that's solid. Very, very headlight racket. Big sweet spot on this. Yeah, I can really feel that this margin for error on this racket is very big. Very forgiving sweet spot. Very headlight and easy to swing. Oh. Wow, especially on that two-handed backhand. Oh. Ah. Wet court, I don't want to run too much here. But first thing I noticed from the first hit is that the sweet spot is very big, which I shouldn't be surprised because Yonex rackets are known for having big sweet spots because of their head shape but yeah this feels great so as far as the new technology goes this new version brings back the VDM vibration dampening mesh which is supposed to absorb a lot of the vibrations and to be honest I've never really been a believer of those types of technologies because I feel a lot of it is just marketing but this one, I barely feel any of the vibration. 
which may be good for some of you who have elbow problems. Ugh, crap. Yeah, so I think this racket will be good for those of you who have sensitive elbows because I barely feel any of the vibrations, but if you like a more crisp playing racket where you can really feel the ball on the strings, I think this is gonna take some adjusting or you might wanna string it up a little bit tighter or with a string that's a little bit more lively, has some pop like a Alu Power or Solenko Tour Bite for example, but it's got great, great pop. I can take huge cuts at the ball and not worry at all about my arm. Especially since the sweet spot is so big. Ah, nothing feels uncomfortable. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay, let's hit some volleys. Oof. Okay, so again, right here, because of the big sweet spot, I can feel my volley sailing a lot more than what I'm used to. Just gotta be a little bit more careful when I'm following through that I don't over push the ball past the baseline because that's the trade off you get for having such a big sweet spot. It's great at the baseline, but it takes a little bit more discipline at the net. Let's keep the ball in play. Gotta get that underspin slice, keep that ball in play, but it's solid if I can hit the sweet spot. It's just, I might end up sailing some volleys if I'm in a heated exchange or I have to make a quick reflex volley. Might benefit a little bit from some weight in the head so that you don't overswing. If you're a doubles player, I would probably recommend you weight this up a little bit in the head. These are just my first impressions, but I can feel my volley sailing a lot more than what I'm used to. I'm having to concentrate a lot harder just to keep the volleys in play. So after playing with the 2022 E-Zone 98 for about a week, uh, I see why a lot of people like this racket. It's very, very easy to swing. It has a very headlight uh, maneuverable feel. The power is great from the baseline. Uh, serves, especially on the flat serves, feel great. The volleys uh, feel nice and crisp and I can really punch volleys out. For me personally, the best part of this playtest was the volleys at the net. Because of the headlight maneuver maneuverability of the racket, I was able to get the racket in position to hit crisp, solid volleys. Uh, it has enough pop and power to put away high volleys, be able to hit angle volleys, but even on the low balls, I was able to dig it back deep into the court. After the volley, my second favorite stroke with this E-Zone was the flat serve. Uh, I don't usually hit a lot of flat serves, especially at the beginning of a match because I still need to warm up my shoulder. It's also my mo most inconsistent serve, but with the E-Zone, if I struck it center in the sweet spot, the ball, I really felt like my, my ball speed was faster than my usual racket, which is a head speed pro. And if I got a really solid hit on the flat serve, the return rarely ever came back. So I think this racket will suit you big servers out there. What I was most surprised about with this racket was the feel. Because I'm such a, a feel oriented player at the net especially, uh, I was surprised at how easily I was able to slice and chip returns and also get up to the net and put away the next volley. Even following my serve into the net and hitting that approach volley somewhere behind the uh, service line, I was able to punch that ball deep, which I can't really do with a lot of lower powered rackets that I use. Although I struggled a little bit with consistency on my ground strokes, if I hit the ball center in the, the sweet spot, especially off the forehand, I really felt that this racket got a lot of easy power. And even though the, the beam is half a millimeter thicker, it wasn't jarring on the arm. I think the VDM technology in the handle is doing its job of absorbing that vibration. I didn't feel any uncomfortable sensations in my arm at all. So if you guys have tennis elbow, uh, this paired with a natural gut or a synthetic gut, I think will definitely help to save your arm. 
Unfortunately for me, I could never get into a groove with this racket from the baseline on my ground strokes. Uh, if I was using this exclusively for doubles where I mostly serve in volley, I think it's fine. But if I had to grind out a long baseline rally, I would eventually miss hit the ball. I wouldn't. I, I just couldn't really find the feel from the baseline that I can with my racket of choice, which is the Headspeed Pro. I don't know if it's just the isometric head design. I know it's a very highly respected design and many, many people like it, but for some reason I've never gelled with it. Even with my V-Core SV98 or my E-Zone DR98, I just never really felt comfortable with any Yonex racket from the baseline. I would just end up shanking it uh, somewhere along the frame. But this is just a personal gripe. Um, if you are comfortable hitting from the baseline all day with Yonex, I think this new E-Zone 98 will help to up your game. The half millimeter thicker beam definitely feels like it gets a little bit more power. Uh, I borrowed my friend's previous model of the E-Zone, which has a slightly thinner beam, and I did notice that the current 2022 model does have a little bit more pop to it. Also, this is a personal gripe that I have with all Yonex rackets, is that they have a very inconsistent grip size compared to other manufacturers out there. If the grip size says it's a L2 or a 4 and 1 4 grip, it feels slightly bigger than 4 and 1 4 grips of other rackets. I don't know why Yonex does this, They're just, their grips just feel too big for me. Uh, my hands are not that big so I actually like a smaller grip size and I usually use 4 and 1 4 but with Yonex I would definitely consider getting a 4 and 1 8 grip size or an L1 just because their grips are bigger than usual. Also, Yonex grips lack a flare at the end, which I feel like sometimes on the faster swings, especially on the kick serve where I really go out wide with my pronation, the racket's gonna come flying out of my hand. I've had that happen a few times with uh, my other E-Zone uh, where the grip is a little bit slippery because I've been using it too long, it's lost some tack. So if you, if you don't like the Yonex grip size, maybe stay away from this because they didn't change anything or maybe you can try and uh, change out the grip palette if you'd like. So is this 2022 E-Zone 98 the racket that finally gets me to love Yonex rackets? Unfortunately no, but it's getting closer, it's getting closer. I definitely like this newest model better than the DR98 that I own. Uh, I also like it better than the previous model of this which I used for a short while. Uh, they're getting closer Yonex, just a little bit more, just a li little bit of something and I think I can finally make the switch to Yonex. Alright guys, so I'm here with my buddy John. Uh, he's a user of the previous 2020 E-Zone, which is this one right here. So say hi to the folks, John. Hey guys. So what kind of player would you describe yourself as? I would say I'm a defensive baseliner. What shots do you like to hit most? Uh, my favorite shot's probably the down the line forehand. Uh, as a previous user of this model, do you think, do you feel any differences between the current generation and the previous generation? Uh, I didn't feel too much of a difference. I think the slightly thicker frame on the new E-Zone did help with uh, getting a little bit more power on my shots. Uh, but overall, that was only that was the main thing I noticed. Okay, okay. So, um, in your opinion, if you own this model, the 2020 generation of the E-Zone, do you think it's worth it to upgrade to the current generation? Yeah, uh, I personally wouldn't. Um, just because I didn't feel too much of a difference. Uh, you know, I feel overall it plays pretty much the same and uh, I'm happy with my current one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess if some people wanted the most up-to-date or the different colors or the different specs, then you would, but I personally wouldn't. Which design do you like better? Uh, oh, that's pretty tough. I actually like this one better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a too. little bit nicer. Yeah, it's yeah. sleek. It yeah. looks very, looks very premium. All right, thank you, John. Yeah, definitely. Yonex is a very popular brand, and if you already love Yonex, I think this new E Zone will definitely help to increase your ball speed. It definitely has more power than the previous generation. But if you already love the previous generation, there isn't a big enough noticeable difference for you to pay another $200, $250 to upgrade to this new one. So I think you can maybe stick with that one. But if you're really interested in it, hey. Demo it, check it out. It's a great racket. Thank you for watching this review of the new Yonex 
E-Zone 98 2022 edition. If you like this content and want to see more like it, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on an open court. The friends and the... Oh gosh, shit! <laughs>